Welcome. I'm Michelle Delalos, and I have the privilege of being the executive director of the Fifth Avenue Committee. And on behalf of FACT's dedicated board of directors and staff, I want to thank you all for coming to our Building a Just and Inclusive City Benefit and Award Reception. We all know that New York City, like many global cities, is facing unprecedented pressures that threaten the very fabric of our communities and threatens to displace longtime residents and further erode the good paying industrial job sector as the city experiences steady growth. We are fortunate to live in a city that values inclusion and diversity. For instance, today, how many people received Vicki Bean's video email today? Raise your hand. Okay. Obviously, more people need to be on the HPD email list. But today marks the second anniversary of Mayor de Blasio's bold Housing New York, a five borough, 10 year plan to preserve and build 200,000 units of affordable housing. Despite the broad support for inclusion and to maintain and promote diversity, we aren't immune to the pressures that prioritize profits over people, valuing outside experts over the lived experience of those in our neighborhoods, or in fact's humble opinion, public policies that don't yet go far enough to strike the right balance between private and public good. For FAC, in order to have a truly inclusive and just city, the lens of which public policies should be judged are the extent to which they promote inclusion, equity, and justice, and balance competing needs that are often omnipresent in our environment. Today, FACT celebrates and recognizes a range of community and citywide leaders who embody and represent the best of New York City. And we also thank and celebrate our many partners and allies in the effort to ensure New York City is an inclusive, equitable, sustainable, and just place to live and work. First, I want to thank our dedicated event host committee members, including Hercules Argirio, Carmi B., Christine Coletta, George Constantinou, Farid Lancheros, Ben Dolchin, Neil Facone, Wendy Fleischer, Heather Gershon, Christine Hunter, Sarah Herbstman, Mark Yar, Judy Kendi, Sam Marks, Magnus Magnuson, Tom McMahon, Richard Singer, and Bill Trailer. That's right, thank you. Thanks to all of their efforts, we've raised over $115,000 this evening to support FACT's award-winning and much-needed programs. That's right, that deserves a clap. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. That supports our programs that serve over 5,500 low- and moderate-income New Yorkers every year. Those efforts include uh, helping public housing residents in Red Hook and Gowanus access adult education and literacy programs, jobs, and supports to move to uh, poverty, to mobility. Your generosity supports first-time home buyer and foreclosure counseling, innovative and deeply affordable housing and community facility projects, some of which you're seeing on the screen above me, and impactful community organizing and advocacy efforts that prevent evictions, that push back against predatory equity and ensure that communities of color who are on the front line of many proposed policy changes inform public policy. It supports organizing tenants around their rights and advocating for climate justice, equitable economic development, and accountable development, among many, many other things that FAC, uh, BWI, and Neighbors Helping Neighbors does. I, I especially want to thank our impact investor, community champion, and, uh, and um, our sponsors, including J.P. Morgan Chase, the Richmond Group, Two Trees, Industry City, Avante Contracting, Hirsch and Singer and Epstein, Lightstone, List New York City and NEF, Mega Contracting and M&T Bank. We really, really appreciate all of your lead sponsorships in helping us um, reach our goal tonight. So thank you, thank you. The generosity and support that everyone, and, and really, you know, obviously the big sponsors are, are always wonderful, but we also really appreciate folks coming and buying tickets and coming to the panel for the substance and participating and celebrating with us. Your generosity and support, our votes of confidence, in fact, and our extremely dedicated staff, many of whom are here tonight. So thank you. I'm going to invite up um, Roxana Benavides, Neighborhood Library Supervisor at the Brooklyn Public Library to present the Community Builder, Builder Award to Julie Sandorf. I know Roxana's right over here. Um, if we were in Sunset Park right now, I can tell you that there would be a throng of neighbors 
that would be following Roxana and, and indicating to you how important what she and her staff does at the Sunset Park Library. And FAC is very excited to be working with Roxana and her dedicated colleagues at the Brooklyn Public Library and the City of New York to create an innovative model that combines expansion and the modernization of the Sunset Park Library and builds 49 100% permanently affordable housing units in the neighborhood. That absolutely deserves it. We are especially honored that our innovative project is part of a growing movement, largely resulting from Julie Sandor's leadership and vision as the head of the Charles Rebson Foundation to rededicate ourselves as a society to public libraries and the role that they play in our democracy in helping to realize the promise of every New Yorker. Roxana. I am very pleased to be here this evening on behalf of the Sunset Park community that I serve as the neighborhood library supervisor of the Sunset Park Library branch. I'm especially pleased to be here to honor Julie, Julie Sanford for her contributions to our communities and neighborhood across our city through many years of dedicated work. Ms. Sanford's career is one that is distinguished by her commitment to education, to reach civic life, and to developing affordable housing for those most in need. In the early 1990s, she founded a corporation for supportive housing which has done much to deliver permanent solutions to chronic homelessness. She also directed the New York City Office of the Local, Local Initiative Support Corporation, where she built public-private pu partnership that revitalized distressed neighborhoods through New York City. Now, as president of the Charles H. Repson Foundation, Ms. Sanford has turned her attention to another deep and pressing need the great need we have across the country, that of reimagining public libraries as the 21st century institutions, as community hubs, as civic spaces. Under her unwavering and able leadership, the Repson Foundation has supported efforts citywide that have called attention to the great importance that public libraries play in ensuring that New York City is inclusive at its growth. Its population is growing. The Reform Foundation support to document the importance of public libraries in a modern democracy and in our city has resulted in significant improvement in public investment to libraries and is in the creation of new innovative models shows us the soon to be developed Sunset Park Library and Affordable Housing Project. <laughs> Ms. Sanford has done this in true partnership with Redson Program Officer Maria Marco Antonio and with the support of her dedicated board. I am grateful and excited that Sunset Park is one of the beneficiaries of Ms. Sanford's vision and education. That Sunset Park is also one of the finalists for the third annual New York City Neighborhood Library Award that the Redson Foundation created. As many as you know, Sunset Park is a thriving, ethnically diverse community of working class New Yorkers. Over 40% of the residents in Sunset Park are foreign born with a substantial Latino and Asian community. And nearly 25% of the families live in poverty. With the support of Ms. Sanford and the Charles Rebson Foundation, the Fifth Avenue Committee, the Brooklyn Public Library, and the City of New York have formed a model partnership that will achieve something that is important Great, of great importance to, Sunset Park community, to the Sunset Park community. A bigger state of the art library for our community and 
permanently affordable housing that meets the needs of the Sunset Park community. So, it is my great pleasure to acknowledge Julie Sanford for her deep personal commitment to those most in need and to ensure that New York City continues to thrive, to innovate, and to be as inclusive as it continues to grow. Ms. Sanford, it is my honor to present to you with the Fifth Avenue Committee Community Builder Award. I didn't prepare anything, but I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, thank you all so much for being here and so supporting one of the great community builders, two of the great community builders of our city, Michelle and Roxana, uh, Fifth Avenue Committee, and, and the Sunset Park Library. They are a formidable team. Um, I feel like it's old home week. Uh, and what I was thinking about as Roxana was talking was that the community development movement and the community building movement in this city have always and continue to be the pioneers in fighting for and developing brilliantly creative and wonderful solutions to really building community. And you know, I think about 1982 when I was in the South Bronx and the same spirit of entrepreneurialism, never saying no, no matter what, and unbridled tenaciousness, brilliant skills in bringing people together around building the fundamental pillars of our society, public libraries, uh, is happening right here for the first time with a lot of grit and a lot of effort and a lot of smarts and a lot of tenacity. And Roxana did not, was very modest. The Sunset Park Library is one of the highest circulating libraries in the city. The library provides one of the widest ranges of services from English as a second language to after school to employment services to places where the newcomers and the old timers meet and congregate it embodies everything that's healthy and alive and vibrant in our communities. And the coming together to do not only the physical revitalization, but embody this excitement of community and of the future uh, is all we would ever hope for for the future of our city. So I am incredibly humbled and incredibly honored and I, feel extremely lucky to be in the company of these two women and all of you. Thank you very much. When, when you can see when you have um, funders with that depth of understanding of the work, how, how easy it is. Um, to, to know that you're on the right path when you, when you uh, come up with some obstacles that you have to overcome. Um, I'd like to invite up FAC uh, Board Co-Chair Melanie Ash and Director of Organizing and Advocacy of Fifth Avenue Committee, Dave Powell, to present the People's Voice Award to the Coalition for Advancement Progress for East New York and Cypress Hills. That's right. And I know East New York and Cypress Hills are in the house. I, I just want to say that I have tremendous respect and admiration for the coalition 
and the uphill battle that you all have waged on behalf of your communities. As a colleague, a fellow community activist, and as public advocate Tish James appointee to the City Planning Commission, I know and witnessed firsthand 13 hours of mobilization and sophistication of the coalition's recommendations. I can also share as ED of the Fifth Avenue Committee and veteran of three neighborhood-wide rezonings under the Bloomberg administration and someone who has the battle scars associated with the Atlantic Yard's accountability that it often takes years of hard-fought battles to shift public policy to the extent that we believe is necessary. As you know, your work on behalf of East New York and Cypress Hills and its residents started well before the rezoning and it will continue long after the rezoning. Take heart in knowing that there is a community of activists who support you wholeheartedly. With that, I'll turn it over to Melanie and Dave. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to be here um, in my role as co-chair of the FAC board um, and to be joined by Dave Powell, who is FAC's wonderful director of organizing and advocacy. Um, and we're thrilled to be, um, to be a part of this ceremony to recognize the Coalition for Community Advancement Progress for East New York Cypress Hills for their extensive efforts to ensure that existing residents and businesses benefit from the changes that have been proposed by the city. As many of you know, as, and as uh, Michelle alluded to, after much debate and extensive organizing by the coalition, last month New York City Council approved a controversial rezoning proposal for East New York that will result in significant changes for the local community, some good and some very, very challenging. Even before the rezoning plan passed, the community saw rampant real estate speculation, increased incidents of tenant harassment, and the real threat of widespread displacement. The Coalition for Community Advancement, formed to bring together over, two, over a dozen vital community groups and institutions. They pushed back against the city's original plan by creating a thoughtful and sophisticated alternative, the community plan for East New York and Cypress Hills. Their community plan prioritizes housing that is affordable to existing longtime residents and anti-harassment and anti-displacement measures to protect both homeowners and renters. It prioritizes better and more schools, adequate community facilities, good local jobs, transportation improvements, more open space, and increased access to fresh and affordable food. As the first neighborhood to be rezoned under Mayor de Blasio's housing plan, FAC recognizes that the coalition's plan has set the bar for how a community organizes itself, develops a plan, and articulates its vision to the city. Like the coalition, FAC understands that there is a critical need for truly affordable housing. But like the coalition, we also know that growth must be inclusive in order to be just, and that growth must preserve the fabric of our community for the long term. And that is why, with the coalition, we are committed to the long fight for inclusion, for fairness, and for affordability in citywide housing and industrial development policy. We also want to be clear that this is not just recognition for a struggle that has passed because this rezoning fight is not over. This is an expression of solidarity for the present and for the future. And in that spirit of solidarity, it is our privilege to recognize the Coalition for Community Advancement and all of its member groups with FACT's People's Voice Award and to invite up Michelle Nugebauer and Dharma Diaz to accept the award on the Coalition's behalf. We salute you and we stand with you. It's, um, 
As it was said, my name is Darmy Diaz. I'm a long-term resident of Cypress Hills, East New York. I moved in as a resident, and I'm proud to say I'm a homeowner for the last 10 years. So being part of this coalition wasn't just about being there for myself as a homeowner, but being there for my neighbors who were not in a place where I am today to be able to have stock in the community and call myself a stockholder. A displacement that we're facing is fierce, is scary, and the word displacement is huge and tremendous. And as I look out here tonight, it's, it's empowering to see the amount of people that are here, the power that you have, and the fact that you're out here tonight supporting the cause. It's huge to have the TAs that we've had on staff and the coalitions throughout the five boroughs that stood together with this process. When the coalition joined about 20 months ago, it was really important for us to say transparency is our number one goal. It was not always easy to work as a coalition, but we were focused. And I encourage you all as you meet and you greet and, and we do, what we have to do as advocates to always forget that we have one prize, to appreciate everyone for what they're worth and everyone at the table brings something to the table and that's why we're there. In, in our process, <laughs> we've made great friends. My brother Paul Muhammad, who joins us here today. <laughs> Gail Davis. Anna Aguirre, Catherine Green is not here at the moment, but also a fearless leader. And of course, Donna Stone, our, our senior. <laughs> and our fearless leader, Michelle Nugambara. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, I, I gotta take a five second sound bite, but Michelle Nugambara has been with Cypher Sills since its inception about 33 years ago. And that in, no, that in a nutshell says a lot. That's dedication, and Michelle, for that, we love you. And we're happy to be here with you today. This, this is really honorable. Thank you for bringing us to where we are today. Well, on behalf of the coalition, we really want to thank FAC for this honoring. We walk in your footsteps. We use all of your templates, all of your studies, all of your responses to every single EIS, all of your arguments um, with the Park Slope rezoning, with Sunset Park, with Gowanus, and your monumental epic battle on Atlantic Yards. We so admire your work. And I need to say on behalf of the coalition, you know, we had some really dark hours and one of the darkest hours was at the planning commission when everyone voted against us except Commissioner De La Uz. She was the only, the only dissenting vote against the East New York rezoning plan. And it gave us a tremendous amount of, of heart and courage to maintain the fight. So we want to congratulate FAC tonight on your long and principled fight for truly deeply affordable housing, for sustainable development, and for social justice in this borough. We stand with you, the Coalition for Community Advancement, East New York and Cypress Hills. Really proud tonight to be your comrades. Thank you. Imagine that when you have two Michelles like, like, yes. like, like, in the community development movement, it's like Michelle N or Michelle D, you know? <laughs> you have to clarify a lot of times. And I can just say that I'm, I'm very, very touched and proud um, to be part of this movement with, with folks like uh, Michelle and, and the tenants and the resident leaders from East New York and Cypress Hills. So, <clears throat> Our next awardee is someone who is known and loved by everyone in the community development movement here in New York City, Deb Howard. I think everyone knows that Deb's the Executive Director of Impact Brooklyn, formerly Pratt Area Community Council. And do me a favor, anyone, anyone who's actually worked directly with Deb in her capacity over 25 years, please come to the center of the room. Please come to the center of the room. Seriously. I bet you more than half the room is about to come over here. I appreciate this, guys. Thank you. So for more than 25 years, Deb has grown and strengthened PAC as it ably served the residents and businesses of Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, Bed-Stuy, 
built innovative and much needed affordable housing, and recently led the organization's efforts to move to Crown Heights and expand its award-winning programs under the new name of IMPACT. But we all know, we all know that about IMPACT and Deb's truly selfless and incredible leadership. Really what I want to share is about Deb as a person. As a fellow executive director who came to FAC over 12 years ago and worked in neighborhoods neighboring PAC, Deb was one of the first people to welcome me into the family of community development activists locally and citywide. She knitted beautiful things for my daughter Eliana when she was born. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> She's been a dedicated chair of the board of directors of ANHD, and for more than a decade, she, along with some very other tenacious folks that are here tonight, gave up many weekends, eat late nights, and time with family, and quite honestly, time for herself, to fight to make the Atlantic Yards Project accountable to the local community. Deb personifies the best of the community development movement here in New York City. She's caring, she's loving, she's funny, she's talented beyond belief, she can discuss the intricacies of tax credit projects and tax credit adjusters and all those fun things. Um, she knows local politics and, and what are behind all the challenging situations locally. And she knows how to maneuver amidst all of those intricacies. And I already said she knits. But, I think we all know that she sings, and she's sung on Broadway and gone on tour nationally and internationally. Um, but more than anything, Deb has a clear moral compass that informs her day-to-day -day work. She knows all the stakers in her, stakeholders in her community and is universally loved and respected. She's a fighter, and thankfully, she's in remission from her cancer. That's right. We all know that she's retiring at the end of the year, so it is with profound, profound admiration and love that I present the Community Partner Award to Deb Howard and thank her for everything that she has done to support me personally and to support the community development movement in New York City and all of the folks that are here in front of you now. Thank you, Deb. Michelle, this particular honor of partnership award to me is really key because to me, community-based organizations mm -hmm. like FAC and, and IMPACT, we can't do anything if we don't do it in mm -hmm. partnership. We can't affect legislative or policy mm -hmm. changes without collaboration. And that to me is the key that that all of us work under, whether it's Stabilize NYC where Dave Powell and Juanita Edwards are working together to on predatory equity investors or rent, you know, rent guidelines board issues or uh, rent stabilization activities up in Albany. We've always worked together with FAC and uh, it's really key to us that we, particularly the Brooklyn groups, Michelle, St. Nick's, all of the groups, we work well together, we know that this collaborating is the way that we can affect change. And that to me is really the tenet that I've operated under with impact all these years. Um, I would say what one thing Michelle doesn't know, which is kind of a funny story. I, in 1971, I, was, I started doing this work in Chicago, in Uptown. And back then it was very different, uh, you know, uh, time period and we were facing what I call urban removal, which was four blocks of uptown in Chicago near, near the Wilson Avenue uh, shuttle stop, uh, were being torn down for a, a college being built. Well, in 1974, I moved to Fort Greene, and lo and behold, huge swaths between Fulton and Atlantic, Vanderbilt to, what, Rockwell Plate, whatever, were being torn down for Baruch College to be built, and of course, 
that area, um, it was part of the Atlantic Terminal Urban remo remo Removal area. <laughs> area. And that's when uh, I, I started getting involved with PAC a little bit, uh, more as a member, and um, I met Allison Cordero then, uh, and that's when I first heard about Fifth Avenue Committee too, because we were on Fifth Avenue at the time. And so, you know, 20, yeah, I know. <laughs> So leap up to 2004, and here we are facing Atlantic Yards and uh, having to do all that work, first in the Council of Brooklyn Neighborhoods, and then, uh, yeah, right, you forgot about that. <laughs> and then with Brooklyn Speaks and like Give the Conies Here Today, and uh, you know, all the, the groups, the seven groups that really were together, uh, worked for 12, well, yeah, 12 years to try to get a resolution to um, speed up the uh, affordability and make sure that they committed to the affordability uh, and instead of dragging it out for 30 years we got it down to 15 and that was really a result of Gibb and particularly Michelle's uh, work. I was when I was not at my best and uh, so I was so appreciative that Michelle stepped up with her intelligence. She is such a smart lady. I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that we actually had some success in that. Um, but I know in future um, we'll still be partnering with FAC uh, as years to come and uh, to me that's a real privilege and I thank you all so much. a height requirement in Brooklyn to be an executive director and a woman. <laughs> um, so um, now, now for the for the thank yous and I'm gonna invite Melanie Ash back up uh, to, to help me do this and thank you all very very much for joining us in the middle and, and giving the big hurrah for Deb Howard. <laughs> um, so I want to So uh, we do want to thank the wonderful team here at BAM. We want to thank great performances for the delicious, uh, delicious food that we've been enjoying. Kathleen Parisi and the K2 new team. Ron Zach, Camille Kazon, and Jack Neiman um, for all of their hard work in making tonight happen. I want to thank my husband Michael who's here because he's patient and uh, because he indulges the fact that I work a ridiculous number of hours. Um, I also want to thank Melanie and the other members of the FAC Board of Directors that are here. Please raise your hands. Um, we really appreciate your dedication. Um, and I really want to thank uh, FAC, BWI, and Neighbors Helping Neighbors and, and Fury staff. Um, we have a very, very talented and dedicated staff and many of them here including many senior staff. Um, again, I want to thank the members of the host committee, their sponsors, and all of you for coming tonight. Um, just, before, just before Michelle wraps up, I do want to just take a quick moment on behalf of the board of the Fifth Avenue Committee um, to acknowledge our tremendously uh, dynamic and e exceptional executive director, Michelle De La Uz. Um, <laughs> An organization is only as strong and as effective as its leadership, and I think we have won the prize with the leader that we have right here, and I think you've heard the respect with which she's held amongst the community, and we uh, are grateful for her, and thank you again, Michelle. Thank you, thank you. Um, so tonight, I, pre I very much appreciate that, and, and I, like, as you saw and as you heard, it, it, there's definitely a sense of camaraderie in, in, among the community development leadership here in New York City and both at the grassroots level moving on up um, all through, through all levels and it, it really it makes a difference when we're, when we're faced with what seem to be insurmountable challenges. I want to, um, is Aaron still here? Okay, tonight is Aaron Schiffman's birthday. So if you'll indulge me for one second while we sing for him, ready? Happy birthday to you. We have a cake for you too. Happy birthday. Thank 
everyone knows that Aaron is the Executive Director of Brooklyn Workforce Innovations and they do incredible things um, in, in, in terms of workforce training, helping um, more than 800 people a year access, um, absolutely, access tremendous employment opportunities. And it's really, he's tremendously dedicated. He's been with the organization um, now for 20 years. So, met much of the success and accomplishments really are because of Aaron and his team. So, happy birthday. Eat, drink, be merry. Thank you all very, very much for being here. Gracias. If presenters and honorees will please join us in the front for a quick photo, I'd really appreciate it. And board members, too.